you wrong too, huh? One thing about it, we're not alone. So thank you so much. Thank sure, you so sure. much uh, for being here uh, this evening. Just wanted to give you an overview uh, based on Hurricane Zeta. Now, you know that um, we definitely made it through uh, after six near misses. Uh, the city of New Orleans was impacted, as we know right now, uh, classified as a Category 2 hurricane. Thankfully, it came through very fast as predicted. Uh, we are now beginning to assess the damage, meaning the city of New Orleans, safety officials are beginning to assess the damages. This is not for residents to do themselves. Please leave it up. Please leave it up to public safety officials to manage the damages caused by Hurricane Zeta. And I say that because we have since lost one of our residents of the city of New Orleans in the Girktown community as it relates to again going out, touching a wire, was electrocuted and is now deceased. Please adhere to what we are saying. It matters. So although we have made it through, we have been damaged. We have been hit. So we're assessing the damage as best we can tonight. And of course, in the morning, we just, we will not stop. Park and Parkways, our director, and McDonald, our crews that have been on standby are out right now removing trees that have fallen. But of course, they will not get them all this evening. But we do not want to lose another life. It's unnecessary, and every life is precious. The New Orleans Fire Department also responded, and I mentioned this earlier, uh, to a partial roof collapse. Uh, one individual was transported to the hospital. Uh, minor injuries, thankfully, as it relates to that. The person who was injured was not in the collapsed structure, just adjacent to it. That's very important. But again, I need to reiterate before I turn it over, to my Director of Homeland Security, Colin Arnold, along with uh, Deputy CAO Ramsey Green to give you more information. Please do not assess any damages. Leave it up to public safety officials. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Colin, and then we can take it forward. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everybody. So we're activated in the Emergency Operations Center. We've been in constant contact with the Weather Service, obviously. Zeta made landfall, uh, Cocodri, uh, as, a, as a, uh, a high category two. As you know, they'll, they'll go back and evaluate their decisions. We were within a mile per hour of being a category three, so we'll see where they come out with that. Sometimes they do adjust. Here in the city, we saw sustained winds of 40 to 50 miles an hour for, for you know, a sustained period of time. We saw gusts 77 to 80 miles an hour. Uh, certainly, Hurricane force winds, tropical storm force sustained winds. Um, clearly, there's damage out there, and clearly we have power outages. Uh, 167,000 Orleans right now is what we were looking at uh, just before we walked up here. Um, speaking with Energy, who is embedded in our EOC, they'll you know they're going to send scouts out now. They're going to start looking at this, but you know night kind of covers a lot of things. We, as the mayor said. A lot of this will be brought out tomorrow morning. As the sun comes up, we'll really start in earnest. They'll be able to start working on a lot of these power issues. Um, with that in mind, we're working with our health department to support, uh, we're tracking about 20 people right now that we believe uh, not in immediate danger, but if power outages continue through the morning, we're going to have to address them. We've been in contact with them. Many of them said we're fine, but we're gonna still keep after them make sure that uh, if we do need to potentially give them an area where there is power, stable power, we're going to do that. <clears throat> if 
If you know of someone that does need that type of assistance, please call 311. Speaking of 311 and 911, our Orleans Paris Communications District, I just talked with Tyrell a moment ago, um, just within these last four or five hours, they've handled over 2,000 calls uh, into the 911 center. The, the majority of those were 911 calls. It's, uh, it has leveled off. Um, they are uh, analyzing a lot of those calls right now, but just a lot of kudos to them and to our first responders who, um, although the winds were marginal up to the point where we would stop, there were some um, prioritization decisions that were made, but they were very brief. And really, I can say that our public safety never really stopped responding to this event uh, when they were asked to be there. Uh, the New Orleans Fire Department, the New Orleans Police Department, and our EMS teams, as they can, are doing rapid damage assessments. The fire department is looking very closely. Police department has been out there and is assisting, even with that, reporting uh, down trees uh, and the like. Um, they have noted no uh, businesses or uh, you know, pharmacies, banks, and the things they were looking at more from the security side. No buildings open, no damage uh, in that regard, so that's good. Um, we have had over 200 reports of tree emergencies to this point. Ramsey will talk about that a little more. Forestry crews from Parks and Parkways are already out there beginning to uh, address that. Um, trash collection will begin at 8 a.m. tomorrow for regularly scheduled Thursday collection. Uh, Ramsey will go into this a little more, but we'll talk about the fact that we'll provide more detail about storm debris removal tomorrow. Uh, tonight is not the night to start doing this. Okay. It's tomorrow, okay? When the, when the sun is out, when we have a better idea of what's going on, this, there's still a lot of unknowns out there, and the public needs to know that. Um, we'll also provide tomorrow through NOLA Ready and through other uh, means additional information resources if you experience damage to your home. Um, and I would like to just say at the end here, we had about two and a half, maybe a little more inches of rain as an average around the city. Uh, rain rates were never really more than an inch to an inch and a half an hour, and that was not for very long. I believe we're very fortunate in this regard. We've had no significant flooding issues reported at all. We've had, had obviously some street flooding issues, water up to the curbs, things like that, but no homes, no businesses, no structures reported this flood. So uh, very thankful about that. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Ramsey. Thank you, Colin. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Colin. Um, uh, just on the operational side of our government, um, so the Department of Parks and Parkways is out in the streets right now, the forestry team. Um, they were going to be bedded down at their location, and they are seeing tons of tree uh, branches, felled trees. About four hours ago, we had uh, 13 inbound calls reporting fallen trees. We now have over 200. Um, and where you're going to see that, Carrollton, St. Charles, Napoleon, Gentilly Boulevard, wherever you have, you know, the broad, uh, the beautiful New Orleans street where there's total tree coverage over it. We haven't had this kind of wind for a long time. So there's a lot of, you know, parts of trees that have been sitting there that were weak that hadn't been, you know, pruned. Uh, so they're everywhere. This is not the time, if you have trash day tomorrow, to go and clean your property up and put it with your trash. We, were gonna, we, were gonna, we have a new graphic to show how to do debris cleanup, how to bundle, uh, all that stuff. That information is going to come out tomorrow. Let us get to the light of day, as Colin and the mayor said, to ascertain what needs to be done now. Um, but those crews are out there and they're working on it. Once we clear the big stuff out of the main thoroughfares, um, then we are looking at sanitation coming through with some street cleaners to take up the big piles of leaves that you may see all over the streets. Um, additionally, sanitation is going to pick up trash beginning again at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Please just take your can to the street. Don't go around picking up stuff. It's already dangerous out there, but you've already got trash in your house from the last week. Go ahead if, if tomorrow is your day. Finally, uh, Sewage and Water Board. The men and women of the Sewage and Water Board performed really, really well over the last six to, to eight hours or so. Um, we've been very open about the weekend power um, availability, and they kept things going. We're still uh, pumping water out of DPS 2, located at the intersection of uh, Broad and uh, St. Louis. So you're going to see some water out of the St. Louis Canal. But we did lose power uh, in a variety of places, specifically sewer lift stations. Uh, sewage and Water Board is moving trucks out right now with generators to keep those sewer uh, lines moving. So you may see a displaced manhole cover. Um, let the crews come out and deal with that, but you really shouldn't be outside now anyway. 
But if you do see that over the course of the day tomorrow, that our folks are looking at it, you can always call up 52 Water to report a sewage and water board problem. Again, 52 Water, or you can call 311 and report it uh, as well. That's all I have at the moment, Mayor. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And I will just add, uh, before going to questions, that the City of New Orleans will uh, be open tomorrow uh, to conduct business. Uh, we will have a delayed opening. We'll start at 10 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning. So with that, Ms. Latonya. So what is your advice? How, what, do you, what do you tell Entergy Mayor? Obviously, this, the, the theme of this storm is power outages. Yeah. Everything held up with the pumps, the flooding. What is your advice? How do you lean on Entergy to try to get the power restored as quickly as possible? Because it seems like no area was really spared, no neighborhood. So how do you lean on them to try to do this as quickly as possible? Well, one is that we leaned in, quite frankly, with Entergy. Um, in, integrated into our unified command within the EOC, uh, never lost a communication with them as we were working on power sources for, of course, uh, you know, pumping stations and the like, but absolutely as it relates to uh, residential uh, homes as well. Uh, we know that we've suffered over 150 outages. Um, we also know uh, that um, progress is being made as it relates to that. But, but constant communication. We knew coming into this uh, that wind was our greatest uh, threat, and that's why we definitely ensured that Entergy, with the level of communication, that it has not stopped. So it is the prioritization of power at this point. Um, the priorities uh, do shift as it relates to our special uh, needs residents in our community, and particularly even those that we know that we have to link them to power as soon as possible. There are about 20 residents right now out of our um, 82 that we were really focusing on uh, over the past couple of hours that we knew needed power. Uh, but again, the prioritization comes to um, where the needs are the greatest and special needs are number one. Colin, anything to add in regards to that? Okay. I spoke with Energy up there and of course we're like, go, 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 you know, and, and they agree. Uh, there's varying degrees of what you're going to see, I think, starting tonight, but really, really starting tomorrow, and that is a lot of the tree issues, when the trees are lifted off some of these lines, um, they'll be able to get them back going. The issue will be is when the tree takes down the line, which then takes down the pole, then you're talking about infrastructure repair, which does take longer. So I think what you'll see is a lot of scouting going on tonight and tomorrow, and a lot of work going on to get us back to power and particularly in areas which are really throughout the city. I can't give you one uh, area that it's greater than others as it relates to transformers that we knew. Um, just, they, they, they the surge, the, you know, they lost power and the like. They, some residents say, oh, it sounded like it, something blew up, but it was uh, the transformers in uh, communities. Uh, even when, um, EMS and our public safety team responded to our resident who was electrocuted by touching a live wire. You know, Entergy had to come on out. Uh, you know, EMS was there on the spot but couldn't do anything because the wires were still alive and uh, the individual uh, resident, yeah. So at any rate, uh, they had to come out, Entergy. So they're out there, they're responding and two priorities. WWL? Madam Mayor, this was the first time in a long time that the city of New Orleans actually had an actual hurricane kind of moving through New Orleans proper. Did anything in this preparation kind of teach you or kind of advise you for storm preparations in the future, whether it be evacuations or preparations uh, in terms of deploying trucks or wow. trucks on and so forth? What lessons are you learning in this? Because we didn't have a whole lot of time in preparation for this. No, well, first of all, no, I, I appreciate uh, the question. Um, this is something that we definitely have been focusing on, meaning the, uh, the rate of storms, the, the, the frequency, uh, the strength of the storms, uh, not you know, coming so fast, coming so hard, uh, even um, outside of our preparation plans in terms of our 60 you know, and, and the time that it takes to truly evacuate our city. So lessons learned, every storm is different, so there's lessons that we learn from, from each one of them. Uh, this one, I will say, it mirrors others of the past in terms of, again, that frequency that we've always been concerned about. But for me, it is really uh, 
doubling down and focusing on our evacuation plan moving forward because the storms have changed. And based on science and data, I expect this to be a trend. I don't expect it to, to, to stop. So we have to be prepared for whatever comes our way. And these are things that we've been talking about even this evening as we were riding out um, Zeta, quite frankly. If I may follow up, it seems and and you think you're gonna as well. And this is just as a lay person. It just seemed like this, the storms, at least in this season, popped up rather quickly and the shifts and the changes of their dynamics. Did, did you feel that in terms of it was hard to predict in, in, in this specific season? Oh, definitely. I mean, it kind of speaks for itself, but I tell you, the good news is that it kept us on our toes. It kept, you know, all of our public safety teams, our unified command, it kept us on our toes. But I like that. <laughs> I mean, I really do. And then with every challenge and facing it head on and you get better and better, meaning just what can we do different? You know, trying to each time doing something just a little bit uh, different. Um, and it's, it, it's worked, uh, even as it relates to um, the Sewage and Water Board and us assessing uh, the existing conditions coming into uh, Hurricane Zeta. The contingency plans that were in place because we anticipated you know, issues with power. Our anticipation kept this city not only dry, but kept power rolling, you know, in spite of the loss of power that we experienced. So, you know, it, it, with every storm and with the best team ever, we're prepared and I'm just so thankful. I really am. Gives you more gratitude than anything, I tell you. The advocate. Um, residents are asking, is there any preliminary estimate of when power can be expected to be restored? I know it's still early. I know it's I know. I know it's night time. I know it's when when am I getting on? <laughs> you know, I understand that. But again we have to uh, prioritize, you know, as it relates to again special needs, uh, public safety. We had uh, several police stations, for example, um, that didn't lose power but lost internet. Um, uh, phone lines and the like, but utilities we have to assess, you know, holistically. So it doesn't mean, you know, if it's not energy, it could be related to another uh, utility uh, utility agency. And so uh, working in concert, but I would tell people, please be patient. Please be patient. It could have been worse. You know, always be reminded of that. Even to our neighbors in Southwest, you know, Louisiana and even our evacuees were still hosting in our city, it could have been worse. So a little bit of patience, it goes a long way, but more information is forthcoming as it relates uh, to the restoration of power. So tune in as it relates to the Entergy's website. Um, you know, you can call 1-800-ENTERGY. Uh, you can even sign up to get their uh, real-time alerts. Uh, you can go online, you can actually see, and hopefully you have some power to go online and charge up everything. We ask you to be prepared, you know. So um, I would say continue to watch. Anything to add? No, ma'am. Okay. Last eight. You got it. Other questions? Uh, if, if I can have uh, Mr. Arnold follow up. See, you got them good. I'm just trying to get them. Can you further explain the, the power disruption to, I think it was the, you said the sewer lift system. Is that going to affect people's water? Or oh, that's Ram. Uh, I'm sorry, Ram. <laughs> Is that going to affect people's water pressure, or should, should we expect any, any alerts about water quality? I'm going to flip my mask over for you, Tom, uh, this sorry. question. Um, the, uh, the, we don't know right now. I mean, what we, what we have is, is we know that, that power's limited. We know that they're deploying generators on the back of trucks. If you have ever seen in your neighborhood, we have a ton of construction going on, we'll have to move line, you know, shut certain lines down via very aging valves and you will see a very loud um, yellow uh, vehicle parked at an intersection that that's pumping your sewerage. That stuff's gonna be happening throughout the, the next 24 hours. Um, we'll know more tomorrow. We have our people we call PDA, preliminary damage assessment teams for all of our city infrastructure are going out tomorrow uh, morning, early morning. Um, right now, uh, kind of our focus is power and trees because as Colin said, they're so interrelated. Let's focus on those, you'll get some more information um, on that. What you, you may see is, you know, displaced manhole covers, and again, if you see something happening in your house with delayed water, lower water pressure, whatever, call 52 Water and report it. Um, 
but yeah, that that's you know we're we're, we're looking for good information from folks as time goes on. And I, I, if I can add one thing, our chief of Parks and Parkways, as um, the mayor mentioned, Ann McDonald said, this is going to take some time to clear all this debris up. This is going to take several days. Power aside, there's a ton of um, vegetation in our streets right now. So just to just to forewarn our residents, it's going to take a bit of time to get all this stuff picked up. Thanks, Tom. You said our trees got a haircut today. Yeah. Well, and they're working now. Um, I had a resident uh, send me a, a photo first tell me that a uh, tree was down on Broad Street, I think 1600 North Broad, and then I said, did you call 311? And I, I made sure I did as well. And then they sent me a photo, say, hey, the heroes have showed up. And I saw a Park and Parkways vehicle, and I saw our folks out there. I said, that's it? So, you know, they're working right now, but again, focusing on, you know, prioritization. You know? Tree, triage. No player of <laughs> All right, if there's nothing else, thank you so much uh, for just coming out um, tonight and, of course, capturing uh, information for the public.